Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Blue Team training series brought to you by Hackexploit and Linode. In this video, we'll be exploring Linux memory acquisition with Lime or the, press, or the process of dumping Linux memory uh, with Lime. So we're now getting into the, into the territory of DFIR or Digital Forensics and Incident Response. Uh, and in this particular context, when I'm, when I'm going to be referring to memory, I'm specifically referring to RAM or volatile memory, which plays a pivotal role uh, when it comes down to incident response. So uh, in regards to what we'll be covering, uh, we'll get an idea as to what memory acquisition is and why it's important. We'll also get an introduction to Lime and what it is used for, uh, how to build Lime and how to dump memory with Lime. So uh, let's get started uh, by taking a look at the prerequisites. So I'm going to assume you have a basic familiarity with digital forensics. Uh, not that you need to have any, uh, not that you uh, needed to have uh, any previous or prior experience uh, with the techniques involved in digital forensics. You should just have a basic idea of what it entails. Uh, you also need to have a, a basic familiarity with Linux and the various command line utilities because we'll be building uh, or compiling Lime, uh, and uh, you know that actually requires some knowledge of how to utilize the terminal and uh, various packages and utilities involved during that process. And of course, uh, because Lime uh, is, um, is is a kernel object, or you know can be loaded as a kernel module, you need to have an understanding of how the Linux kernel works at a, a very basic level. But I'll be explaining or filling in the gaps wherever uh, that is required. So, uh, what is memory acquisition? Memory acquisition, also known as a memory dump, is the process of dumping volatile memory, known as RAM, from a specific system that is typically compromised to a non-volatile storage, uh, also known as disk, for the purpose of analysis. So what does this mean, simply put? Uh, this means that, you know, you're going to be given a compromised system, right, as an incident responder, and your job is to then take uh, or perform a memory dump of the RAM, uh, you know, for later analysis or, and extraction with tools like volatility, which we'll be exploring a little bit in this video, because uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at how to utilize volatility for, um, you know, to essentially analyze a memory. Uh, but in that video, we'll be focused primarily on Windows dumps. So we'll be exploring a little bit of, uh, you know, Linux uh, memory analysis with volatility in this video as well. So uh, the objective here, as I said, is to, you know, dump the memory from a compromised system to, you know, uh, and essentially save that dump uh, in the form of a raw file or, you know, whatever format is useful for you. Uh, memory dump could contain valuable forensics data about the state of a system before, during and after the compromise. So that's why this is very important. And this actually plays a pivotal role when it comes down to digital forensics, because you can uh, really get an understanding of what happened uh, by taking a look at the, you know, whatever was stored in RAM. So things like the process list or the process tree, uh, you know, get, uh, you know, essentially analyze the console history, what was typed in, etc, etc. So, uh, this forensic data uh, can then be used to identify the cause of an incident and other key details about the tools and techniques used by the attacker or the adversary, ultimately giving you a clearer picture of what transpired on the system. So the objective here is to, you know, get a really good understanding of what happened on that system, what is running, what was typed in, what processes were running, so on and so forth. So... Let's get an introduction to Lime now. So what is Lime? Lime is the Linux uh, memory extraction utility. That's uh, literally what the, the actual, uh, you know, abbreviation stands for. So Lime is a loadable kernel module, also known as an LKM, that is used for the acquisition or the dumping of volatile memory from Linux and Linux based devices like Android. So uh, this tool is very popular when it comes down to dumping memory from an Android device. However, you know, it can really dump, uh, you know, the memory from any uh, Linux based uh, distribution or derivative, if you will, uh, like Android. Uh, Lime supports the acquisition or dumping of memory either to the file system of the device or over the network. So, uh, you know, if you put yourself in the position of an incident responder, you're typically going to be given access to the system that has been compromised. And once you actually dump the memory, you're going to save that in the form of a, a memory dump, uh, either in raw format or, you know, whatever format works for you. 
uh, but you're going to need to analyze that dump on your own system typically, right? So this is, uh, I'm simply going over best practices here. So you need a way of transferring that uh, that memory dump onto your own system and Lime provides you with that ability. However, that really isn't that important, especially in the context of Linux. But uh, what you can do is you can utilize Lime and essentially redirect the actual dump uh, you know, into another system through the use of Netcat. So if you're not familiar with Netcat, you can essentially, uh, you know, connect and set up a listener, receive, uh, you know, receive a, uh, a connection, and you can also send data from one system to another with Netcat. Uh, it minimizes its interaction between user and kernel space processes during extraction, consequently allowing it to produce memory captures or dumps that are more forensically sound, uh, than those of other tools designed for Linux memory acquisition. So this is very true when it comes down to dumping Linux memory. Uh, you know, Lime is pretty much uh, one of the most widely used tools because it's uh, really fast. Uh, and that's something that you'll actually see uh, when you get into digital forensics and incident response. So in this case, we're going to have a simple scenario set up where we're going to use Lime to perform a memory dump of an infected or compromised uh, Linux system running Ubuntu. 18.04 for later analysis and we'll uh, again be exploring a little bit of the analysis with volatility in this video. So as for the resources for this video you can uh, take a look at the Lime GitHub repo posted here and uh, you know you can you know get started there and we can actually get started with the practical demonstration. So I'm going to switch over to my Ubuntu virtual machine and uh, we can actually, you know, take a look at how to build a uh, Lime and how to load it, how to dump memory, etc. All right, so I'm back within my Ubuntu VM. And in this case, I've set up an Ubuntu 18.04 uh, server here on Linode. And uh, it's already running. It doesn't really have anything running on it. it uh, and nor has it been compromised. But I'm just setting the stage for a very basic scenario. So I've already SSH'd into the box and I haven't installed anything yet. And right over here, we have the Lime GitHub repo here. As you can see, it stands for the Linux Memory Extractor. And, uh, you know, you can go ahead and take a look at the features here. So full Android memory acquisition, acquisition over a network interface, uh, minimal process footprint, and it also allows you to produce a hash off dumped memory, which uh, might be useful in certain cases. But in the context of RAM, at least in my experience, a hash is not really important because uh, the contents of RAM are volatile. And that means that they're going to change. And that's what RAM is used for. So uh, again, to get this set up, you need to know uh, about uh, kernel objects and how to load them. So, uh, you know, in order to install Lime or to set it up because we're, you know, because uh, we need to use it or we need to load the kernel object because Lime works in the form of a kernel object, which makes sense because uh, dumping memory requires certain, uh, you know, privileges and also interacts with uh, kernel space as well. So uh, clone this repository on the infected system. Now, one thing I have to mention, and this is very important, is that you can build Lime on your own system and then transfer the actual uh, kernel object to the infected system. But the problem with that is when you're doing cross compilation, you actually need to compile it uh, with the same kernel version that's running on the infected system. So for example, because this is a, um, a loadable kernel object, uh, you know, when you compile it, it's essentially going to be compiled for the version of the Linux kernel that is running on the system that you're performing the compilation on. So that's why it's recommended to perform the compilation on the actual system, although that is really not recommended. But again, in this case, we'll just be using that example. So as you can see, I'm currently logged in and I'm the only one logged in uh, just to make sure. So what we need to do now is we need to uh, clone this repository. So I'm going to say git clone. I believe clone should already be, uh, sorry, I believe git should already be installed here. Indeed it is. Uh, this will give you the Lime directory. Now in order to uh, build or compile the actual Lime uh, kernel object, we'll need to install the following packages. So sudo apt get install, make GCC and build essential because uh, especially on Ubuntu, these are the utilities required uh, to essentially compile or to build a particular binary or in this case, a kernel object. So I'll hit enter. That's going to take a couple of seconds. There we are. And uh, we'll just wait for this to complete after which we can navigate to the actual Lime directory. 
and uh, we can then head over into the source directory that contains a make file already and we can uh, you know just type in make so did we install make yes we did all right so i'll navigate into lime there we are and under src you can see that uh, we have all the c files required here um, and of course we have the make file there so we can essentially just type in make and if we take a look at uh, let me just display the current distribution release version so ubuntu 18.04.6 lts and the kernel is uh, in this case version 4.15.0 okay so that's very very important uh, and in this case, what we can do is uh, you'll actually see when we perform the building. So we can just say make within the SRC directory. You can see that uh, we we shouldn't get any errors here, but there we are. It actually created the uh, the Lime kernel object and it renamed it based on uh, the version of the Linux kernel that's running on the system. So Lime version 4.15.0 uh, variant 169 generic dot ko. So we can now load this particular um, kernel object if we if i type in ls mod here and uh, you know in this case uh, let me just show you what ls mod is used for ls mod essentially shows you the status of the modules within the linux kernel and uh, you know if i say ls mod i can pipe that and say grep lime and you shouldn't you should see that that's not yet loaded so we can then say uh, ins mod and uh, you know we can then specify the actual um, kernel object which in this case is going to be lime version 4.15 etc dot ko ko is the extension for a loadable kernel object um, we then need to specify so we're now performing the actual dump here so we need to specify the path where we want to store the dump so i'm going to say path and in this case we'll just store it within the home directory of the root user after which um, we can you know, we can specify the name of the dump so in this case I'll just call it dump.mem and we then specify the format equals raw you can also output this in a lime format but in this case raw ensures that you know we can essentially uh, you know extract information from this dump through you know other tools like volatility and if we hit enter that should dump it uh, and uh, you should you can actually see how fast this will be uh, you know, based on, you know, whatever is running in memory. In this case, the system it only has one gig of RAM. So that's why it was that fast. And I'm assuming the actual memory dump file should be one gig of RAM or one gigabyte in size as well. So if I navigate to the root of the C drive, you can see we have the dump.mem file there. If I list, uh, you know, all the files there, let's actually say DUSH to get the actual size. So there we are one gig. Um, and we can now extract information from this memory dump or analyze it with a tool like volatility. All right, so we will be exploring the process of uh, how to analyze uh, memory dumps with volatility in the next video. So that is going to conclude the practical demonstration side of this video. So thank you very much for watching. As mentioned, if you have any questions or suggestions, please uh, leave them in the comment section or you can reach out to me via Twitter. Uh, and or the discord server so as i said in the next video we'll be uh, exploring memory forensics with volatility and taking a look at how we can analyze and extract information from memory dumps uh, more specifically we'll be exploring uh, how to do this uh, on um, you know essentially how to extract uh, you know various bits of uh, information from windows memory dumps so i'll be seeing you in the next video